In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, today in our churches the passage of the Gospel through Matthew is uh, emphasizing again at the next part of uh, Jesus' speech uh, against the Pharisees and uh, Sadducees that were constantly trying to trap the Lord with uh, His words. This passage also includes the Lord's last public speech in which He condemns the hypocrisy of the scribes, law teachers, and Pharisees. This enunciation of the religious authorities of the time is what led to his crucifixion a few days later. If we replace the priests, scribes, and Pharisees of that time with those with, uh, with those uh, days, even uh, within the Orthodox churches uh, today, we will not find many defenses. We will unfortunately remain speechless. All to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. With this phrase, Jesus began his a denunciation uh, of the religious leaders of Israel. In his teaching, he wanted the uh, scribes and Pharisees of their impending punishment. He called them hypocrites and accused them of uh, inconsistency between their words and actions. And unfortunately, in our days, is not any different than back then. But what hypocrisy is? Now, how can we understand this? What it means? And um, when you became its captive, captivated by hypocrisy? Well, hypocrisy is the deliberate concealment of feeling and thoughts. The term, the term uh, hypocrite and hypocrisy originating from the ancient Greek theater uh, referred to the actor and their art of uh, on a strange um, acting, acting on behalf of some, uh, someone or um, uh, representing someone else, right? When I use um, the term acting in uh, our relationship with, with others, um, we became hypocrites, right? Because we're not honest. Hypocrisy is the opposite of authenticity and sincerity and honesty. A person falls into hypocrisy but by trying to maintain a good external image without ensuring that they are internally the person that they want uh, to appear to the others. And it, this is exactly what the Pharisees were. And this is why the Lord is um, describing them as tombs from outside being built nice with marble and stuff, but inside are full of uncleanness. So the Pharisees were a group of uh, experts who represented the law. Faithful and dedicated, they strictly adhered the, to traditions and formalities their beliefs were closer to those of uh, the Old Testament. Um, that was uh, their foundation. They considered themselves superior to others. 
and wielded significant influence in uh, Israelite society. The scribes were those who studied the Mosaic law and scriptures. They, pray, they paid great uh, attention to the details of religion and could go to extremes from the sake of their interests. They were attached to a doctrine and did not accept any reform. Naturally, the interpretation of the law was their uh, exclusive domain. Jesus condemned the hypocritical lives and criticized the fact that they emphasized ritualism while be being corrupt, greedy, selfish, and uh, aversious, claiming that Jesus wanted to abolish the Mosaic law. Jesus tenderness and compassion towards sinners and the prostitutes enraged in them because they considered these people unworthy and impure. Jesus asked people to be genuine and true. He spoke to them about modesty and forgiveness, disputed authority and money, and practically opposed the ruling class, which consisted on the scribes and Pharisees. They tried to trap him through discussions and challenged him to prove his divine origin. According to the scriptures, Jesus revealed to the public the hypocrisy of the Pharisees, saying that they neglected the deeper meaning of the law. He warned the Jews that they did not practice what they preached. He compared them to whitewashed tombs, as I mentioned, which appear beautiful on the outside, but inside are full of dead bones and uncleanness. O to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside they are full of robber and selfish indulgence. These were his words that made them deadly enemies. Since then, the word Pharisee has come to mean hypocrite. Of course, it is obvious that among the scribes and Pharisees of the time, there were also various officials, uh, but the scriptures suggest that they were generally a ruling class that uh, operated solid, solidly for their own interest. This is the case in many societies, regardless of religion and time period. Not that we're, when there weren't uh, uh, good ones, and we know like uh, someone like um, Nicodemus that came uh, at night and spoke to him, of, or uh, Joseph uh, of Arimathea that are mentioned in the uh, New Testament. And of course, there were many others that aren't mentioned. But generally speaking, the majority, the vast majority uh, of those group uh, was uh, groups were, were against uh, Jesus Christ. Um, so today, less importance is given to the social dimension of the of the message the conflict between Jesus and the ruling classes of the time, the chief priests, scribes and Pharisees, as if today the phenomena of a pharisaic uh, hypocrisy, which a poison human relationship has ceased to exist. The convenient part of faith is that the Messiah sacrificed himself for all. And all we have to do is a little fasting, prayer, a small sacrifice, uh, just deny our ego and follow him. Whoever wants to follow me, he said, let him deny himself. 
take his cross and follow me. So the inconvenient part of faith in rela relation to Christianity is to practice love for others. Social justice beyond private gain, beyond give and take, beyond the client clientist relationship, as we would say today. As uh, a moral teacher, Christ was the first in uh, history to denounce and condemn the clientelist religious relationship, the material give and take, the animal sacrifices, the offerings, and the dedication that were catastrophic. And uh, the, the the dedication that was uh, uh, also characteristic uh, characteristics for pagan religions. Indirectly, this is a moral blow to the clientelistic uh, relationship of power in any form, which unfortunately is so common in our days. It's all based uh, on uh, relationship, whom you know. Uh, from uh, which family you are coming and what position uh, you hold and so on and so forth. It is characteristic that in front of the temple, seeing the market of uh, uh, religious commercialization, he became enraged for the first time in his teaching to pronounce a series of condemnation against the scribes and Pharisees, such as all to you scribes and Pharisee hypocrites, Blind guides who strain out a knot but swallow the ca a camel. In this way, Jesus denounced their hypocritical lives and characterized the fact that they em uh, emphasized ritualism while being corrupt, greedy, selfish, and aversious. The question today is whether the hypocritical scribes and Pharisees have disappeared because they might have been baptized as Christians, as social influence um, disappeared because as Christians we celebrate uh, Easter, Christmas, uh, we go to church, uh, uh, we see many politicians uh, attending, att attending even services and um, taking, being part of uh, various events of the church. But doesn't that doesn't uh, uh, say much about it, right? Uh, quite the opposite, one could argue. Major holidays are cultural events, but they do not uh, eliminate social injustice and the awful craft of hypocrisy. What um, do the suffering of Jesus teaches us? Well, it teaches us that he, he, his condemnation and crucifixion were orchestrated by the chief priests, scribes, and Pharisees, who also swayed the crowd to support it. Jesus did not clash with the emperor or king, nor did the, he attempt to seize power by force, but he challenged the hypocritical values of the ruling class, the unacceptable social inequality, and denounced the commercialization of religion in the temple. He taught the, in, uh, uh, the internal transformation of the individual. He showed with his stance that it leads nowhere to kill or imprison anyone king, governor, because society does not change with the replacement of a person in power as long as the privileged ruling class remain untouched. As long as the religious, political and economic oligarchies remain without social control, the decisive factor for the history of human civilization is that he did not separate the theological principles of salvation 
from the social principles of his teaching. On the contrary, in the Sermon on the Mountain, he connected true faith in God with helping one's neighbor. I say to you, as you did it to one of these, the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. He linked the light of uh, truth with uh, social just, justice. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for, for righteousness, for they shall be, uh, be, be, be saved. However, pharisaic behavior throughout the ages that nothing uh, does nothing but separate the message of faith from the truth about social justice, turning it into ritualism and commercial re relationship and politically deceiving society. The hypocrite is a creature more disgu disgusting than any other sitting hidden in the dark pits of uh, falsehood and sitting traps, setting traps on the outside to mislead innocent people. He is selfish, hard-hearted, merciless, greedy, and cowardly. But he covers these trials with false humility, compassionate words, and sweet talks. The hypocrite has no God or law and pretends to fear God and his law. In the authentic Christian, Orthodox Christian message, however, there is no truth and salvation without good works, without compassion, without love and understanding. Amen.